Hello everyone, this is Colin Champ in my first of hopefully many, hopefully millions of my vlogs as opposed to my blogs where I write about scientific articles and try to extrapolate the information. This is going to be strictly discussing scientific articles, reviewing them, and these are articles that you, my readers, have emailed me and asked me to write about, so instead I'm going to talk about them. Hopefully there'll be more to come. I'll do this every couple weeks, maybe less, maybe more, depending on your enthusiasm out there. So keep me posted, uh, let me know what you think. The first of, of hopefully many, again, the inaugural episode, inaugural, excuse me, episode is on fasting, which you all know is near and dear, dear to my heart. This is an article from the Journal of the American Medical Association. This is a big player, a big player in the game, and this article is prolonged nightly fasting and breast cancer prognosis. And what this is, is a study assessing 20, over 2,400 women with a history of breast cancer. These are women without diabetes, and they were part of the Women's Healthy Eating and Living Study, the WHELS study. This is a study where they put women on a low-fat, plant-based diet to try to get them to lose weight and do some other things. Uh, that part of it failed, which, which is probably not too surprising. Um, as we know, a low-fat diet is really not so healthy overall. Uh, some other thing that irked me about this study, this is tangential, but a plant-based diet, if you know what it is, please let me know because I've never had anyone ever actually tell me what it means in any tangible way, shape, or form. Uh, I hate when, when nutritionists and dietitians tell patients and other people to go on a plant-based diet. Nobody knows what it means. Um, I had a paleo-esque diet, it's my own little modified paleo diet, um, and each plate that I eat off of is full of vegetables, the majority of the plate is vegetables. I think few people would agree that I eat a plant-based diet, though it's certainly very plant-based. Nobody knows what a plant-based diet is. Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't know what a plant-based diet is, and God doesn't know what a plant-based diet is. So let's stop telling people to do it, because it just is confusing them. Uh, much like a low-calorie diet, but that's a whole different uh, issue. So what these uh, authors of the study did was they estimated nightly fasting uh, in these women during a 24-hour dietary recall that was done at baseline at year one and at year four uh, from women in the study. So basically they asked people on three occasions how much food they ate and try to figure out how often they fasted throughout their entire life. So certainly an issue, a lot of guesstimation going on here. Uh, dietary studies are quite expensive and difficult to run, so this is the best we got. So I'm not being critical of the authors or the study. Uh, I think it, it produces interesting information, but obviously many, 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 many issues there. Uh, also, do we trust people filling out these forms? I don't, know, I don't even know if I trust myself filling out one of these forms. What they found was that on average, women fasted 12 and a half hours per night, which frankly I found a, a little hard to believe. I think most people eat pretty close to bed and then eat breakfast right when they get up in the morning. So I would think it'd be more like nine or 10 hours. So if that's true, that's impressive. So good job, women. Um, fasting less than 13 hours, this is, you like, you like the good, um, I'm trying to congratulate people, be positive. <laughs> fasting less than 13 hours per night resulted in a 36% increase in relative risk of cancer recurrence. So 13 hours, on average it was 12 and a half. So 13, which is only 30 more minutes, resulted in about a third of an increase in recurrence. In actuality, only 390 of the 2,413 women experienced a recurrence. So that 36% is, is a bigger number than in reality, if you see the overall, the actual numbers of recurrences, is, is actually quite low. So I'm not saying this data is not important because it's certainly important. Um, there's a couple things here before I get to my conclusions. Longer nightly fasting was associated with a lower chronic level of blood glucose. That's a hemoglobin A1C, which is your average three-month blood glucose. We know that glucose is very bad for cancer patients. It, quote, feeds cancer cells, so it's a little more in-depth than that. Uh, women that fasted longer also slept more. Uh, eating after 8 p.m. was associated with a higher C-reactive protein. That's an inflammatory factor. And also women that ate after 8 o'clock had a higher body mass index. So this isn't surprising, but it's interesting. So if you sleep more, you have more melatonin. Melatonin fights inflammation. Melatonin also fights breast cancer cells. So of course, sleeping more is good. If you're sleeping more, you're eating less, you're fasting longer. So what is causing what? Which contribution is, con what is contributing to what? We do not know. Also eating a night may disrupt sleep, causing circadian rhythm issues. So 
At the end of the day here, if something as simple as fasting 13 hours, which I think we could do a lot better than that, if that actually does reduce your risk of cancer recurrence by a third, that's huge news that puts treatment in the hands of the cancer patient. And that's great news for us all because we can do our part to fight cancer, not just sit there while people like myself bombard you with radiation, surgeons cut things out, and medical oncologists give you chemotherapy. It's nice to have your own potential options here. So again, we don't know for sure if you fast 13 more hours, it's gonna actually do that. This is an epidemiologic study. And associations are interesting, they're hypothesis generating, but until we actually get a randomized study showing what fasting can do, we can't make firm conclusions from this. But again, for most people, talk to your doctor first, blah, blah, blah. For most people, it's harmless. So if, if that simply would, would do that, 13 hours of fasting would simply do that, of course you should do it. Um, so rounding this off here, what are the possibilities from the study? So the first possibility is the, di the data was coincidental and based on some unknown association like sleep or something else. They did a lot of stats, but you never know with these type of studies. Again, that's why this is hypothesis stimulating. Uh, secondly, fasting causes a decrease in several pro-cancer pathways like glucose or blood sugar, IGF insulin access, uh, inflammation, and simply having less fat tissue will cause less inflammation and adipose tissue secretes estrogen and other hormones that we know can fuel breast cancer cells. So maybe it was simply that. I think it's probably a combination of both. The next is that maybe it was just that fasting decreases inflammation, which may be, which is a fertilizer for cancer cells. I think this is likely as well. I think it's probably all of these thus far. And then moving on, maybe it's just that fasting simply decreases calories, which helps reduce the risk of cancer recurrence, which to me sounds too simplistic. Calories are a lot like plant-based diet. Nobody knows what the heck you're talking about. Uh, and calorie-restricted diets in themselves don't work very well and they really stink to do. Uh, people who fasted longer simply slept more and that made all the difference. It's possible. I don't think that's the case. I think it's part of it. But again, we don't know. But in summary, if simply fasting 13 or more hours reduces your risk of breast cancer recurrence, would I do it? I would. Can I recommend it to every patient out there? Realistically, yeah, but again, it's individualized. Um, I myself fast twice a week at least. I fast Friday night, I have dinner at five or six, depending. Um, the, the Denny's uh, early, early bird special. And then I don't eat again until noon the next day. And I do the same thing on Saturday night, again, till Sunday. So I get about two 16 to 18 hour fasts in. Sometimes I do a 24 hour fast. I have friends that do fasts more often during the week. I have friends that do periodic eating windows, those kind of things. You gotta see what works for you. But I think fasting for a lot of people is probably an easy way to potentially help out with some metabolic uh, issues, whether that's cancer or some other things. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the future. Last but not least, while I was really excited about this study, the results fell flat somewhat on me, but it did pass my grandma test. You're thinking, what is my grandma test? When I asked my 95-year-old grandma, when I read the study to her and tell her the results, I see which, how she responds, and she said, of course, eating less, or of course, fasting for a longer amount of time decreases your ch chance of breast cancer recurrence. But sometimes we need scientific studies to prove grandma right, and this one did. Again, something very simple may give you some ammo against cancer, so this is good news for everyone. Kudos to the authors for forwarding science. I can't wait till this is a study. Uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath for a randomized study because these are expensive, but maybe in 2015 when we're on what, episode five million? We'll talk about it then. Everyone have a good week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any questions, give me an email, of course. Send me articles that you want me to discuss. Uh, things you like about this, let me know. Things you don't like, let me know. I'm open to constructive criticism. Uh, check out my website, colinchamp.com, and then I'll post all these Twitter, whatever the heck all these media things are, up here in a second. So I uh, hope you liked it, everyone. Everyone have a good week, and try to stay healthy out there. Bye-bye.